Good evening, folks. I often get similar questions about the tilt of Earth in the cyclical disaster. They're ones I don't usually cover in detail. They're things like, why is there evidence of the magnetic poles in their positions for millions of years, if the Earth tilts? Why do ancient star charts show the stars as they are now, or the monoliths still line up perfectly with the stars, if the Earth tilts? Why is some Antarctic ice over a million years old if it goes to the equator every other cycle? Well, the first two were easy, as we have gone over some of them. The Pentagon Papers taken by Major White support the story of numerous others and the modern observations, and they suggest the poles go back and forth, putting them in the same places repeatedly. This is why there is indeed expected to be that evidence over long periods. As for the star charts and monoliths with astronomical significance, I'm pretty sure most of those are less than 6,000 years old. All are less than 12,000 years old. They are all from after the last catastrophe and tilt, so yeah, they better be the same. But the one about the million-year-old Antarctic ice, that one is a bit harder. And I bet some of you were wondering about the ice that goes to the equator from the poles and what happens to it. For this question about a million-year-old Antarctic ice, we need to address three things. The dating, the equatorial glaciers that exist today, and the uniqueness of the Holocene, the period we're in now. So first, if you recall, they once thought Greenland ice was over a million years old as well, and then they found evidence that the entire thing was ice-free in the last 100,000 years. They make a lot of assumptions about Antarctica, and on top of those, there is a problem with the isotopes they use to date ice as well. We've spent a great deal of time going over the dozens of studies like this one, which does happen to be my favorite, where they thought the ice in Tibet was over half a million years old, but now say the upper limit may be less than 20,000 years old. Million-year-old ice in Antarctica? I wouldn't be so sure about that. But hey, let's forget what we just said and play devil's advocate. Let's presume they are correct. Yes, you can still move the current polar positions to the equator every other cycle, and no, there is virtually no chance that they're going to melt away. Here is where today's low latitude, the current tropical glaciers reveal, and the heat of the last 12,000 years tends to trick our imagination. When we see the equatorial glaciers that exist today, we must realize that those are still there after 12,000 years in the tropics, and that is with the Holocene, the name for our current hot interglacial, being way, way hotter than previous 12,000 year cycles, with the last 10 of them being within the glacial period of the approximately 100,000 year cycle. The previous interglacial was over 120,000 years ago. Well, what if this wasn't a hot interglacial that we were in right now? What if this was a cycle 50,000 years ago? How much ice would be left at the equator after 12,000 years at that point if the world was in a glacial period? I'd wager there'd be much more than just a few remaining tropical glaciers there would still be enough left to make you look at Antarctica and Greenland and say, yeah, 12,000 years is nowhere near enough to melt all of that, especially if you take three to six degrees off the planet. By the way, the areas with tropical glaciers will be heading to the poles once again, just like last cycle when they accumulated the ice that is still there today. And so, yes, there may indeed be ancient ice at Antarctica, and it doesn't change the story one bit. The heat of the interglacial is tricking us into thinking that all of Antarctica would melt if you put it at the poles. The world today says it isn't so, and when you go back to the other cycles, there wasn't the heat to melt it either. When we remember that this is all probably moot because it's probably not a million years old in all likelihood, and that data will change just as it did in Tibet and Greenland. Yes, this means I expect Antarctica and Greenland to remain ice worlds at the tropics, for the entire next cycle, when they will go back to the poles and accumulate once again. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.